Greg Norman, professional golfer, entrepreneur, and world-renowned golf course designer. He's a two-time British Open champion. He's been honored with the GCSAA's Old Tom Morris Award, and his golf course design work has been recognized for both design excellence and environmental stewardship. GCSAA TV spoke with Greg Norman about his design philosophy and his relationship with the Environmental Institute for Golf. Well, first of all, my, my number one philosophy is the least disturbance approach. Um, every piece of property you get is different. Um, you have to understand that there are components and aspects of environmental issues that come into play. Some countries respect it, some countries don't. I think it's, the, uh, it's incumbent on the designer or me, the builder and designer to make sure that we do respect with the environmental issues no matter where you are in the world. And I think that's, uh, that's, a, that's a barometer that, that we should take going forward for the game of golf as well. Uh, I don't like moving a lot of dirt, uh, A, from the, not only from an environmental issue, but also from a costing standpoint. And I think owners now and developers now are getting a lot more sophisticated and very wise on how they're spending their money on building golf courses. Norman credits his love of the environment to his childhood in Australia. I think being uh, Australians are very much an outdoor loving nation. Um, you know, we've got a huge country with a small population and we like to experience what the outdoors are all, the, all about and we call it the outback. So we go out in the bush a lot, as you say. And uh, So when you get out there, you've got to respect it. Uh, if you don't respect it, it's going to come back and bite you in a lot of ways. The infancy of my life was uh, that I loved the outdoors and I love what it gave to me. And I always knew that this, uh, there's a great saying, I don't know who came up with it, but you know, uh, we don't own the world, we belong to the world, basically. And uh, so when you think about that, we have to respect everything that happens on this planet. And if I have a way of doing it um, on my golf course design projects anywhere in the world, of giving something back to the flora and fauna of this world, uh, I'm gonna do it because it's a pleasure, number one, and, and it's rewarding, number two. When starting a new project, Norman has found that sometimes a little education and environmental stewardship helps both the owners and the developers. We try and explain to the land planner that if you talk to the golf course designer and the architect at the same time, then we may be able to save you a lot of money. Uh, because sometimes when the land planner gets it and we just get corridors to work with, they're putting their development in their, what they think is the most pristine property. But by the time you integrate golf and the infrastructure of golf in there, sometimes you can double up. And sometimes you can save a lot of money going forward. And sometimes you can save the environment too because you're not doing two things. You're not destroying one thing and then having to go redo it or destroy another part to make it fit. Informing the public about the environmental benefits of golf is important to Norman. For that reason, Norman joined the Environmental Institute for Golf as chairman of its advisory council to help spread the word. Fortunately, we get the finger pointed at us saying golf is bad for the environment. There's a lot of other things out there that are bad for the environment that are being built nowadays, and golf is probably the least. And I think we've got to turn that around. And, and the way you can do that is get on this soapbox and uh, become part of, my thought was, become part of the Environmental Institute for Golf and teach the world about how good golf courses are, how sensitive we are to the environment, and, and the practices we're putting in place. A lot of it comes down to committee members of some of these golf clubs. Um, you know, the guys who donate their time, which is great to be on the Greens Committee, but they don't understand all the components because they have another job to do. You know, it's just a matter of education. We spoke with Norman about the maintenance standards for golf courses. In America here, it's, it's got the feeling like everything's got to be lush and soft and wet and the ball doesn't roll anywhere. And you look at some of the great golf courses outside of America, they're hard and they're dry and they're brown and they have a bit of brown patch here and a bit of green here and, and that's the way golf was played. Uh, we didn't have irrigation systems around decades and decades ago. Uh, we, we designed golf courses to make that ball camber off something and work its way over to the green or if you miss hit the shot it gets taken away from the green. Um, so it, it'll happen, it's, it's all about water management and everybody's understanding that water is going to be a commodity a very expensive commodity going forward. We see that now in some golf course design jobs we do. Um, so we have to be very much more alert about that. The relationship between players and superintendents is symbiotic. Norman describes his personal experience with superintendents throughout his career. 
Well, I think they're the unsung heroes of the game of golf. Uh, they're the ones who get up very early in the morning. They're the ones who control the billion dollars, billions and billions of dollars in this game. And um, you know, without them, we wouldn't have the ingredients that we'd love to have in the game of golf, which is perfect greens, perfect fairways, perfect tees, you know, impressive looking golf courses that are groomed immaculately. When we go to build a golf course, you want to make sure that superintendent's on hand right from the get-go. As soon as you start pushing a blade of dirt, so he understands what the design is doing, he understands what the construction is all about, and he can tell you, that, you know, when you start doing irrigation and doing irrigation heads and you're doing drainage, he knows what's going in the ground. It makes sense to have him on board immediately.